Alright, I've had a number of people ask me for this, and this is a clone of Windows. We're looking at React OS right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Let's begin. I know the picture may look a little bit distorted, but the thing is I can't get VirtualBox guest editions to install properly on this, so I can't uh, show this, uh, you know, uh, in my native screen resolution, and uh, so I kind of had to stretch everything out here. But here it is, and every time I play in this, something always crashes. This is my fifth take on this. And uh, hopefully we can get through this without anything uh, wonky going on. Alright, upon first glance, it looks like Windows, pretty much. Or a Linux distribution that's made to look like Windows. Now, this is an operating system that has been built from the ground up. This also uses some Wine technologies that we have in Linux to be able to get this to function. Now, according to my research on the... Wikipedia, this project has been an alpha stage, and it's always been an alpha stage. Uh, even when I uh, switched to Linux, I decided to look at this as a possible alternative, and it was still an alpha, and I think it will always be an alpha until they can get some uh, developers to step up into some positions and uh, start doing some serious coding on this. Okay, so we have my computer, and this opens up your uh, React OS Explorer. And from here, you can see it's really hard to move windows around here. From here, you can uh, choose your views about how the windows are laid out. You can have them stacked up on top of each other, left and right. This is something I think Windows Explorer should have. Um, so, really neat idea here. Uh, they have uh, shell options here for you. You can view the web. If the internet's going to work this time, doesn't look like it will. And then uh, NT uh, object, what this does, who knows? Ah, the internet did come up for me. But um, it is kind of slow here. Not very responsive, but I will tell you what, this thing does boot up really fast. Quick access to my documents, your network places, trash, and whether your recycle bin is empty or full, it looks the same. Uh, your command prompt, which is uh, basically a DOS-based command prompt. And we're looking at 0315 of React OS. And then, of course, this has a package manager, which is kind of cool. There's some audio applications you can get. So this takes an idea from Linux and incorporates this in here, which is pretty neat. You can install a number of uh, things in here. Not every category is populated, mind you. Uh, but there's some applications you can get load in here. I was considering uh, trying to install Diablo 2 on this thing, but it gave me some trouble, so I just said... Uh, I <laughs> My biggest pet peeve was trying to get uh, VirtualBox Guest Editions installed. Couldn't do it. But it stands to reason you could try and run some different Windows applications in this, but without the guest editions, let's say if you want to install some 3D games or something like that on that, you really can't do it that well. Although I did see some screenshots and older versions of this where they were successfully able to get some games like Max Payne and other OpenGL uh, rendering games working in this. So, some Office tools, some development tools, nothing in uh, edutainment, Nothing in engineering, no finance, no science. A few little tools thrown in there. Drivers. Now, uh, I was able to get the AC97 driver installed, so I was able to get sound playing on this thing. Some libraries that may be dependencies for those applications you may try and run on this. And then some other stuff. Let's have a look at the menu here. A desktop switcher that's built in, pretty cool. Quick access to the React OS Explorer, and minimize all windows showing the desktop. Start button. 
Pretty familiar looking, eh? Your Explorer. Number of programs in here, and uh, Windows compatible, of course, administrative tools. Nothing in startup. And get this, you can actually click this tiny little button up here, and that will allow you to undock that menu from the uh, listing there. So you have some, ex uh, just a magnifier tool, a few little accessories, some entertainment tools, an audio recorder, media player. Let's have a look at this media player. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that reminds me of the very first uh, media player that Windows 95 had looked like that. Okay. Some games. Kind of wonky the way this menu is sticking here. Um, it, it lists the VirtualBox guest editions, even though they didn't successfully install. A few little system tools here. We've already looked at the application manager and the React OS Explorer. Okay, quick access to my documents, recent documents. That's funny. This list isn't even populating because I've opened up a bunch of stuff and it's not saying anything in recent documents. All right, uh, nothing in favorites. I didn't put anything there. Uh, all your settings are done from here. Ah, we have a control panel. Didn't even notice this before. Ah, okay. So now, anything you want to uh, configure in here, you can configure. And it looks like we have Wine Direct 3D. Ah, cool. So it looks like they probably already have this enabled. Well, um, let me uh, see what happens if I run DX Dial. Diag. Yep, so Direct 3D doesn't work in this. There's some other things to play with. Set up your printer. Ah, okay. Settings menu here, administration, network connections, browse files, yada, 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 yada. Well, this has got to be, this has got a long way to go before it'll be anything really usable. Um, but I'm glad you guys suggested this to me. Previously, I couldn't even get this thing working in VirtualBox. And I was lucky that they did have some images this time around that I could just simply load into VirtualBox. And that's the only way I've been able to uh, even look at this. So, actually, this is my first time uh, using it. I had a chance to play with it for, for a little while. And luckily, it didn't crash on me this time during the uh, filming. So, that's always an added plus. Would I recommend this for everyday use? Absolutely not. Don't use it. But the thing is, if you have some wonky uh, application that you can't get running under Wine, you could try and run this under a virtual machine if you don't have a licensed copy of Windows to see if you can get it working that way, because this will run some programs, but for some reason I just cannot get the VirtualBox editions to install. But, but if you're using a QMU or um, VMware and try and run this in that, Maybe you might have some good results. Mm -hmm.